So I'm gonna show you something today with the Cheetah 3D particle system and it's something that I rendered today actually while I was working on a website that I needed a background for and I rendered this image using the particle system which is, is kind of kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make that now. Let's get going. So first thing we're gonna need is a cube. That's pretty much the focus of our our scene. So add the cube. You see I've got the orange lines here. That's because I'm using Cheetah 3D 5.6. I'm using the beta version of that, uh, which has got this really nice object highlight in, uh, that I really love. I think it's really useful. That. And we've got the little gadget mode thing here. Um, I'm not really going to do much with that here. Um, so if you run an old version, that's cool. So I'm going to double click to make that box editable. And then I'm going to move into edge mode and press Apple A to select all. I'll then control click and choose bevel and there it is and just click once and that's just bevel our edges nicely there for us and so I can throw on a subdivision onto the cube and it gives a nice soft edged cube it's nice and quick nice and easy to do right so next up we're going to need to set up our particle system so I'm just going to click away from the cube so it doesn't throw the particle uh, array into our cube I'll click on camera and I've got to go to the particle menu and choose particle array. So you can see the little dots there represent our particle array. We just need to drag our box into that particle array in the object browser and you can see it's done it, but what you can also see is that our cube's way too big. So I'm gonna just select the scale mode and scale our cube down until we've got some kind of little cubes with fairly big gaps between them because we're gonna have varying sizes of cubes, varying rotations uh, and I don't want them to bump into each other. So that's cool. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's great. So it's kind of already looking okay. We can make it look better though. So what we're going to do is make sure you clicked on your cube and go up to this menu here. I never know what that one's called actually. Um, but let's add a particle tag. And a particle tag gives us a little bit more options in the way of what's happening with these particles. So We've got position, variation, position, frequency, blah, 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 blah. The one we want to look at is scale variation to start with. So I'm going to set all those to 1.5, like so. So you can see now what's happened is we've got some cubes that are bigger than the others. We've got some little ones down here and some fairly big ones. That's kind of good for the composition of our image. And we're going to do something similar with a bit rotation. I'm just going to do this one by eye though. So just kind of drag these around till you get something looking interesting. And zoom in a little bit. I'm going to get right into the scene for this one. For this render, I think that will make it look a lot better. So kind of compositionally, that's that's good for me. I'm happy with that as a scene. So let's add some materials. So add a new material and go to the diffuse channel and pick a colour. I'll do the same as what I rendered earlier today. I'll, I'll pick a kind of red. I'm not too bothered which one. I'm gonna just give it a little bit of reflection, not too much. Just a little bit. We don't want too much going on there yeah. Round about there, something like that. Play with that, see what happens. Try try other things as well while you're at. And check the Fresnel option to get them kind of deeper reflections and that's that's the basis of all our materials for this one so let's drag that onto our box so we've got our red cubes but if you remember from my render we've got three different colored cubes going on what's good about the particle system is you can do this really easily if you add multiple elements or objects into your particle array what Cheetah will do is balance out your particle array between these objects so you can't really see that now but if on my duplicated cube which I just copied and pasted there if I select that color tag and delete it you'll see 50% of my cubes now no longer have any color attributed to them which means that if I duplicate this material over here and change the colour to something else. That's, I had a kind of a dark, dark grey black colour before. 
somewhere around there and then drag that onto our new box we've got two colors now in our scene and we can do that for a third so select your box copy paste and you'll see now what's happened there is we've now got two thirds of our cubes and now represented with this kind of grey black colour and that's because I just duplicated that one so let's duplicate the material and we'll make the kind of light grey white colour uh, it was about there, something like that that's kind of cool, not too fussy on this tutorial so delete the colour tag from our second duplicate box and we'll drag that new material on so you can see we've got a third of the cubes of this kind of grey light grey colour, a third of red and a third of dark grey. Pretty much it for our scene right there, let's just set up our render now so first thing to do is let's remove the background so for some reason I always set it to white before I remove the opacity I have no idea why I do that and I'm just out of it I think because I don't want a background on this we're going to render it with nothing so we could overlay it and something in Photoshop if we wanted or do whatever you want with it. So that's our background removed, we're going to add a couple of tags, we're going to add uh, radiosity uh, I'm happy for that to just stay as ambient, ambient occlusion nothing really needed to be tweaked there and I'm going to add an HDRI um, just for the sake of getting a few more reflections into our cubes so I'm going to load a, an HDRI and there's a couple that come bundled with Cheetah I'm just going to choose the Old Town Pano one so if you just type Pano when you're browsing in it will find it Press open, I don't want that to be rendered in the background. So just uncheck that and that will keep our background nice and clear. And that is pretty much it. I'm just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna boost up the output resolution. I'm gonna double that up to 128960 so you can see that nice and large. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's hit the render button and see what happens. So our render's just finishing up now and that's looking pretty much like what we wanted it to look like. And the cool thing about this is the same principles that we applied to changing the colours. You can do that with objects. So we could have some cubes in there, we could have some toruses, some spheres, you could kind of mix it up and get a little bit of everything going on. It'd be really cool if you guys just had a play around with this one and see what you come up with and post what post what you get. It'd be, be nice to see. Okay, that's wicked and uh, I'm gonna say thanks for watching even though it's still rendering but you can see what we've got and uh, have fun with it. Thanks a lot guys.